how are you guys? We want to welcome you here this morning, and for those who are online, we want to welcome you for joining us. Let's stand. We're going to have some fun, and it might get a little loud because we're excited. We serve a God Amen. who is amazing, and we just want to give him the glory today.
God does great things, doesn't he? Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. You do good things, God. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow. God is unshakable just as that song says and this past week we've been going through Romans in our Bible study Romans 9 15 says that God God has mercy on those that he chooses we may not always understand it but we have faith and trust that God will sustain us so he is unshakable and through that through that we can hold on to him and have faith in what he's promised us so amen Good morning, church. Welcome to Case. My name is David. Uh, I'm one of the volunteers here, and I want to welcome you. 
and we want to greet each other this morning, not with a holy kiss, but we want to greet each other and welcome each other into this building. So take a few minutes, greet your neighbor, greet someone you've never met before, and... Well, hopefully you've gotten to greet someone, and if you want to start finding your way back to your seats, we will have plenty of time to connect after the meeting as well. Uh, but if you are new here, we want to welcome you, and in the seat pocket in front of you, there is a, what's called a connect card. If you're new here, even if you're not new, we would love for you to fill that connect card out because we would love to stay in touch with you. It asks for some information, and we want to stay in touch throughout the week and let you know what we have going on throughout the week. If you also would like some prayer or want to celebrate with what God is doing in your life, we would love to hear from you as well. We have leadership here that would love to pray for you at the end of the service, even talking to you, or you can email prayer at churchse.com and let us know what's going on, that we can uh, partner with you. And we do uh, believe in giving. We are a giving church. We believe that uh, we, we love to give God back the first fruits of what he's given to us. And I, honestly, for me, the story of Mary and Martha comes to mind, where they were with Jesus, and one of them sat with intentionality to just listen and spend time with Jesus. And the other one served, was preparing stuff, and you know what? It's easy to think with tithing, it's only about finances. But I want to challenge you, and I, even for myself, what else am I holding? What else do I have available that I can give back to God? Whether it's my time, whether it's even just supporting someone with connection. Relationship means a lot, right? So what else do you have that God might be challenging you to even let go and release to Him? There's so much that we don't think of, and if He's asking us to even give something, it might be a challenge, but something that's really profound that I, I found profound anyways, was obedience doesn't change God's opinion of us. He loves us regardless, but obedience changes our view of God because we can see the faithfulness when we're faithful with a little, too much is given to those who are faithful with a little, right? So obedience in what he's asked us to do really highlights who he is in our lives and really changes our view and allows us to get to know his heart more. So I wanna leave you guys with that and just pray. Father God, I thank you that you've given us, you provide, and even more so than the birds or the fish in the sea, you love providing for your children. Would you show us just everything that you've given to us and even what you're asking us to give back to you, would you help us to do it with grateful hearts? I thank you that you are faithful to complete the work that you start in your, your children, and you never leave us. Amen. I've been following Jesus since I've been coming to church. Because I want to take a leap in my um, faith. Well, we have the, we have the privilege of having Oakley here today. And <laughs> it's been a long time coming. He's wanted to get baptized for a bit. So I have a couple verses here just to introduce the topic of baptism. First off, baptism 
was a, is, is a step of obedience that Jesus commanded before he left. It says in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus himself was baptized. He says here, Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. <clears throat> On Pentecost, after preaching to the multitude of people, or after preaching to the multitude of people, the people asked Peter, "What must we do to inherit such a great salvation?" Peter said, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for those who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to Himself." Um, oftentimes people think of baptism as just being a picture, and, and it is. Baptism itself portrays the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. In Romans 6, 4, it says, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Beyond just being a picture, though, it's actually a celebration and a joining of ourself with Jesus. It says in 1 Peter 3.21, baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's my privilege today to baptize Oakley. Oakley, have you believed in Jesus and want to live your life for him? Yes. Then it's my privilege to baptize you. baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Worship God for a while. Come on, let's praise up. God. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for Oakley, pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As a young man, I'm asking you to fill him. Baptize him, Lord. Baptize him, Lord. You said all we have to do is ask. And we know for sure the baptism is coming upon him. Now or immediately in the immediate, immediate future. One thing we know, Lord, he belongs to you 100%. No enemy has any right to him whatsoever, ever, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit fill him as he comes out of the waters of baptism in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're proud of you. It's a great step to take for all these people. You're a great boy. God bless you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen.
that you need to lay at the feet of Jesus, just give it to him. Just know that even if you've experienced failure in your life, just know that he will never fail.
the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself. tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great
Father God, I thank you that you, you're always great. We can come to you at any time, good or bad. You're always going to be there for us. I thank you for your faithfulness, even when we're not faithful, that you are faithful to stay by our side. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Awesome. Well, another welcome this morning. Uh, it's been a great service. We got to participate and worship together, as well as celebrate with a baptism. I mean, that's just the start of it. We've got uh, pastors Andrew and Evelyn Picklick here. They're from our partner church at Motion, Motion uh, Church in Kamloops, so we want to welcome them. They were here last week and have been here the whole week, so yes. Uh, and I know they've been here for the full week and just pouring out to this body. They've been meeting up. I know myself and uh, Vicky met up with them on Friday and got to spend an hour and a half or two hours with them and just sit with them, get to know them a bit more. And it's, it's been a great blessing. So thank I just want to honor you thank both you. and thank you for that. Thank you. Not just for myself and Vicky, but for the body, for Amen. Case and just your mentorship and your, your willingness to pour into our lives. Thank you. So I really want to honor you guys for that. Thank and it's a treat to have them here visiting thank us. And uh, I want to invite Pastor Evelyn up. She's going to just talk to us about uh, International Humanitarian Hope Society. Uh, and if you'd like, this is a bulletin that you can find at the hub just outside the doors, just to keep you updated. Uh, but I'll let Pastor Evelyn talk more about that. Thank you, Dave. Doesn't he do a good job? Wow. <laughs> Praise God. It's so good to be here again this Sunday. And thank you for your warmth and love to us. We really, really appreciate that so much. It's been a great, busy week for us, but... Uh, our hearts are full of joy and gratefulness to the Lord for all that he's doing in this church. This is amazing. There's so much happening here that possibly a lot of you don't understand. They're very important, in, in, uh, planted into uh, missions around the world. And I want to show you some pictures this morning of your involvement in the kingdom of God around the world. This is what you have done out of this church. And uh, we're gonna start with this picture of the school that we just built. You were the major contributor for this school and they put a plaque up. <laughs> Amen. So we'll just roll the pictures. <clears throat> this is the cutting of the ribbon for the opening of the, and this is Bishop himself and here they're praying a prayer blessing over the school it was such a momentous time there this is uh, bishop and george in the pink him and his wife are the pastors of the orphanage they have 44 children that they support here's a desk that you bought for them this is last time we were here and uh, at the opening they also had all the desks assembled and ready to show the children the kids were so excited, as you can see. <laughs> They're really precious. This is all high school students now. And then we look at the elementary. They still have the old desks in the old buildings, you know, but they're very happy. And <laughs> they feed them every day there as well, plus uh, buy the uniforms for them. So it's such an active um, place and the children, this is a lab. They also have a lab now, so this is really exciting to see the children advancing in the science. Now we're going to Emmanuel Children's Home in Myanmar. Myanmar is next to Thailand, and uh, this is the orphanage over there that they have. This is the boys' dorm. Now here's the girls' dorm that uh, we are expanding. We're building another floor on top. They have 17 little girls, and uh, they went to the government. This is really interesting. They said, uh, could you help us? We need to build a second floor on the girls' dorm. And the government lady came out, and she looked at it, and she said, we'll give you $6,500 to do that. That is amazing. That is a miracle, believe me. So we're adding... We're adding to that. We've already sent 4000 and uh, we've got about 6000 to go to finish this up. 
And it is so exciting because this is a pastor there that runs this orphanage. And uh, he's, he puts these kids through Bible school by correspondence. And on the internet, they are learning so quickly. So he's raising champions. This is the school, or the orphanage, I'm sorry, the girls' dorm. All the supplies coming in. It's a very, very busy place. But not only that, this morning I was thinking, you know, about seven years ago when I was in the Philippines, the Lord spoke to me and said, do a women's conference in the Philippines, in Cebu. And I thought, wow, how am I going to do that? And uh, so I talked to some of the leaders there. <clears throat> we planted a church in Cebu. Now that church has expanded to grow three more branches of uh, churches, and uh, it's growing so fast. So I talked to the pastor. I said, Pastor, what do you think about doing a women's conference? He said, oh, that would be so awesome. I said, we could do it as an outreach because there's so many women here that need the Lord. So we got together, our heads together, and this church sponsored that women's conference in Cebu for $50,000. Give yourself a big hand. We, we had 350 ladies come out three days, and we taught them from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Every day we fed them, we took care of them, and to see the fruit that has remained from that is just amazing. And besides that, we had ministry come from different parts of the world. They heard about this women's conference, England, Singapore, Vietnam, France. I mean, they came from everywhere on their own expense, and they said, we want to help. So we ran three um, conferences at the same time in the, in the different, uh, <laughs> it was really something. Um, they had the, the auditorium divided up so we could have run three classes at once, and we ministered to those ladies. We had ladies from the street come in, give their hearts to the Lord. I mean, it was a remarkable time. But I just want you to think about it. Seven years ago, you were maybe a little smaller as a group, but that's what you did. That's what you uh, launched for through us in the Philippines. So the seed remains. And I just want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart for being such a loyal supporter of what we're doing around the world. My husband does leadership conferences when we go like to Africa. We're going to be going and ordaining 31 pastors. And uh, it, the work just goes on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. It's awesome to be a part of a church that partners with so many different organizations to pour out into the local community and even further. So without further ado, I'd love, love to welcome Pastor Andrew, if you want to invite me or join me in welcoming, welcoming him to the stage. Amen. What a morning. Give God praise. This is an awesome morning. <laughs> Stuff is happening. People are getting saved. Young ones are getting baptized. How many remember your water baptism when you got baptized? Amen. I did that to you who hasn't been baptized yet. <laughs> okay, you can sign up for it and get baptized and don't wait. It's been a, a marvelous week. We, uh, wow, it's just the presence of God here. Wow. Yikes. We're very, very privileged to be part of this body. We are. We don't consider it a burden or a load or an obligation. We're driving here, and I said, you know, I'm excited to be in the church and to be with the body of Christ, so just amazing. I'm so excited. Who knows? I may disconnect from Kamloops. Never know. I'm excited to be part of the two bodies, Pastor Johnny and us get along. I want you to know get along extremely well. We share, we talk about here, about the whole thing. So the transition has been wonderful. And, uh, you know, transitions can be wonderful. How many believe that? 
you know, I'm well aware and worked with a lot of churches that the transition went really, really bad and hurt a lot of people, a lot of ministry. And uh, I had no idea how to do transition. I just said, God, help me walk step by step. And there's people here, this, this is a prophetic word for you. You have no idea to do what God is asking you to do in the next step. And have your ideas, there's nothing wrong with that, but God will, re, God will organize your ideas and add to your ideas. How many know that? Holy Spirit wants to be part of all of our life, all of our life, whether it's in business. He, the Holy Spirit's not just for a good church service. The Holy Spirit's for a good church service so we can serve out there and be who God wants us to be. So today I want to um, continue to talk about who is the church, what is the church, simply because I feel a tremendous drive and burden that this is very necessary, always has been, but because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God all over the world, the visitation of God all over the world, literally all over the world, that the necessity for the local church and the structure of the local church um, attain and retain the wine of the Spirit, the movement of the Spirit, and then be able to distribute that, as it were, effectively in all aspects of our society. How many get that? So it's not going to be held skelter all over the place, scattered, pieces of the body of Christ everywhere. It's going to be through an assembled body of Christ that God has for us, and there's a great thing. So I'm going to start with how important is church, how significant is church, and uh, I'm going to try and follow the notes a little bit. Uh, I think I'm going to finish my... All right, to I do something about it. It's not me, it's actually the microphone. <laughs> Amen. I was back there and came over here and somebody said, uh, turn your microphone off. Well, that's their responsibility over there and it's supposed to stay on all the time. Not like the preacher who forgot to turn it off and right before he preached had to use the facilities. <laughs> so he went to use the facilities and the PA people were just scrambling, wondering what in the world is this noise coming through? In, in the audience, finally, he's walking down the hallway, go, oh, just help me, help me, anoint me today, anoint me today. He walks on the platform, pastor says, one thing we know, we heard you washing your hands, and that's wonderful. <laughs> so I am extremely cautious, and this thing is on my ear. Okay. So uh, do you want to give me a mic, or should we start? And so you don't interrupt the anointing. If it's fine for you, it's fine for me. In fact, I don't even need a mic. I could yell way louder than that. All right, you take care of stuff, and I'll take care of my stuff. Acts, pardon? Quit touching me. <laughs> I'll give you 30 minutes, 30 minutes to get your hands off my body. I'm crazy, I know. I, I have fun. How many know we can have fun in the house of God and still stay spiritual? Okay, okay, whatever. I don't like technology. Okay, you do whatever you want to do. I'm going to preach. Just hang in there when the anointing hits you. All right, Acts 20 and verse 28. Thanks, buddy. Acts 20 and 28. The Bible says to the leadership to be careful to grow themselves. You can read that scripture there to advance themselves in God because they are to feed the church which Jesus purchased. Now, as I look at you, I am ministering and part of an extremely expensive group of people. Over the years, Satan has 
try to make the church look crazy and useless, uh, criticize the church, public media over there uh, finds any kind of little fault. They find one guy, two guys that fall or do something wrong, and they, they play that violin over and over and over again, but they haven't found anybody that's powerful, faithful, and moving on in God and make those announcements. How many know what I'm saying? And so we're not going to join that crew when we see whatever happens sometimes to ministry or churches. We're not going to be rotating that and creating a negative view of the church. We're going to see the church as Jesus sees the church. When Jesus looks at the church, he doesn't see you first. When God looks at the church, he doesn't see you first. He sees the blood of his son first, covering you. He sees righteousness covering you. Come on, say amen. amen. Preach with me this morning. So he purchased the church. Whatever you purchase, whatever you pay for, your purchase has to equal the price you paid. Got it? Yes. Say, I got it. got it. Because I don't know whether I'm coming across well or not. My background's Ukrainian, so who knows how I'm coming across. So say, got it. So in other words, the price Jesus paid and the value of who Jesus was, let's take this slowly. All right? It's like a mother writing to her son, says, I know you're a little slow, so I'm going to write very slowly so you can read it properly. We have to take it slowly and say, how much is the church worth? What is the value of the church? Forget what the world says. So God sent his son to pay and purchase the church. His son is equal with the Father. Jesus and the Father are one. Amen? Amen. Jesus is the same value as the Almighty God who sent Jesus down to pay for the church, to buy the church. You're purchased. So what he bought is equal to the price he paid. We're not just a little group. We're not just a little religious exercise. We're not just some religious organization or society that the world might criticize. We are the most valuable entity on earth. I'm going to keep drilling it because you're not saying amen. If you want me to quit preaching, you want to go for lunch, say amen. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going until we get it. Thank you. How much is this assembly worth? Who have you come to this morning? I'm going to church. You've got to see it very differently. You've got to see it with divine revelation. This is the body of Christ on earth. This is the kingdom of heaven on earth, the body of Christ. All week, this statement keeps going over and over in my head, the body of Christ. I'm driving that here. The body of Christ. If people could only touch the hem of his garment, the garment that was on the body of Christ. It would be healed from all kinds of issues. Issues. When people come here, whether we have an altar call or not, whether, whether we do a certain kind of model or not, is really not 
the significant thing. The significant thing is that they're coming, I want to say it carefully, to Jesus, the body of Christ. God looked through all of heaven, the seraphims, the cherubims, the angelic host, the archangels, the gold, the silver, the diamonds. How many knew that Entwistle area is the diamond capital? I don't know, of the world or the province? My wife looked it up. I said, what? Are we reading it right? Diamonds. All of that. I just want to kind of unpack this. I got a lot, lot of notes, so don't worry about it. I'm not just wasting time. I want to unpack it. All of heaven and all of the universe was not enough to purchase you, the church. Why? How can something else or someone else purchase the likeness and image of God except God who is the likeness and image, that we are the likeness and image of God? Value for value. I'm going to repeat this statement many times. We, in our personal walk will be revolutionized as God unveils who the church is. We will not use gimmicks. We will not use stuff to try and keep people in. That's too shallow. You know, the, the stress that ministry goes through and you go through is like, have you said hello to them? Or if you don't say hello, they just might walk out and never come again. Well, uh, we, we want to say hello. We don't want to say goodbye, but we want to say hello. We want to be friendly. We want to do all that we want to do. To keep him in the house long enough to get a revelation of what the church is. But if I still have to cater to people that have been in the house for 20 years to make sure they keep coming to the house, they just have no revelation or a super shallow revelation of what the church is. One person hurts him, they dump the whole church. Hi, do you know who you dumped? Do you know what and who you walked away with? You know, we, we need to be like Elisha. Elijah, the prophet of God, says, don't follow me anymore. <laughs> I mean, you're getting it already. Stay over here. And Elisha says that the Lord God liveth. I will follow you. What if we said to some of our church members, don't come to this church anymore. And they would go, yeah, fine, up your nose. I'm not coming to this church anymore. I've just been told not to come to church. Or you might say, I don't care what you say. Amen. I'm in this house. Come hell or come high water, I'm in this house because I have a revelation of who the church is and what part I play, and I want to be here if I play no part. I just want to be in something so expensive. So costly. So valued. Let me go on. Might have some more good stuff in the notes. <laughs> the church is as valuable as Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was the price. And individually, think about what it does individually. One of the, one of the greatest things that people struggle with is worth and self-worth and not feeling important and, 
and you know, I need you know, 25 friends to feel important. I'm going to be honest with you, I love friends, but I can feel important without one friend because I got the friend of all friends, and that is Jesus Christ. That's where you start with your friendship. Don't look to others what Christ is supposed to do in your life. Don't look for fellowship that you're supposed to have with Jesus and you're looking for to get it out of somebody else. You're not going to. They'll disappoint you sooner or later or you'll disappoint them sooner or later. I mean, really, really, really hear this and understand how valuable you are. People talk about value. Well, I'm, I'm valuable because I'm used in the church. I'm valuable because I've got friends. That's all wonderful. Those are, those are the side effects. But the value comes when we understand how much Jesus Christ paid for us. I'll read on, on, in my notes. In this day, God's revealing who the church is. In the days to come, I prophesy that the world will find out who the church is. The world will find out who the church is because the world thinks it's ruling itself and running its own show, how many know that the church is supposed to rule the world? Okay, I'm going to run that by again. The, the church is supposed to rule the world. We're not just a little charismatic party. We are God's divine government on earth, originally intended to rule and reign with Christ on earth. Come on, church. That's who we are. That's where God is taking us. We have a bigger purpose than influencing two or three neighbors. We have, a, we have an Ottawa purpose. We have a Victoria purpose. Where's your capital? Edmonton? You should be happy. They won, even with a broken hockey stick. This isn't it. This isn't just having good services and, and having people come. That's part of it. But there's a big picture. The Bible, God said to, to Abraham, you're going to bless the nations, which means you're going to empower the nations to succeed and to prosper. You're going to have impact in the nations, plural, the world. Don't let me get excited all by myself. In days to come, the world is going to find out that ultimately the church is to rule. That the nations of the world and the kingdoms and the systems and the governments of this world who are anti-God are going to have to bow their knee and adjust their systems to the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ will be and is Lord of all. He is the king of all kings. I know we're kings, but he's the king of all kings. He's the king of the universe. Have a vision. Your prophets saw this and prophesied. You are the living, spiritual body of Christ. It is the eternal God of heaven, the almighty one, the living one, functioning and operating this body to meet his purposes and his vision. I want you to get that revelation. Hearing it is one thing. Book of Revelation, Jesus said over and over again to those that have an ear, those that have an ear, let him hear. What do you mean? We got two ears. He wasn't talking about the physical ear. This morning, he's talking about the spiritual ear to hear what God is saying. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and what comes by hearing? And hearing, listen carefully, hearing comes by the word. The word opens our ears to walk in the faith required to walk in the word. The church will not and cannot be shaken. The church is the instrument to shake up things in the world that can be shaken. 
Let's turn that around. You know, we, we hear so much, oh, you know, COVID really shook up the church. No, it shook up religious orders. It shook up religious organizations. You with me? It never shook the church of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is an unshakable rock. And as the church, as the church rises up in authority, you say, how is that going to happen? Well, let's go way back in the Old Testament quickly and look at Elijah. The nation was going the wrong way, and Elijah says, hey, guys, it's not going to rain until I say so. Did you, how many heard that? You know, religious people say, oh, no, no, no. Elijah, it's not what you say so. It's what God says say so. Well, God says say so in heaven, and we say say so on earth. Are you hearing me? God rules the heavens, but he gave us to rule the world. But we're so falsely humble that all we were waiting for is the rapture to get out of here while Jesus is trying to keep us in here to do the work that needs to be done. In the year 2000, I remember all the buzz word buzz about what's going to happen in the year 2000, what's going to happen in the year 2000, there's going to be a shift. I said, God doesn't run by our calendar anyway. He don't have a calendar. He runs by events, not calendar. I told our church, nothing will happen. But if something happens, I'll meet you in the rapture. <laughs> but there'll be nothing that will happen. Nothing will change. Oh, well, Jesus will probably come. Every time there's trouble in the world, how many know everybody's preaching about the soon coming of Jesus? Everybody's preaching about the end time. It's not the end time for us, church. It's the end time for the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is coming to an end. Read your Biblia. For us, it's a great beginning. What's the end time for the world is the beginning time for us. Don't get hung up on the end time. Why don't we preach end time when everything is going good? I told you this already. Somebody said, well, how do you know Jesus isn't coming soon? I said, because everybody thinks he is. <laughs> the Bible says when everyone thinks he's coming soon, he's not. Read it. It's in the Bible there. But when everything is like ho-hum, we can now relax. I don't think Jesus is coming. There's no wars. There's nothing of that nature. Uh, look out. Then the trumpet will sound. Our relationship, and I think, I think it would be wise to introduce the value of the church and the necessity for the revelation of having a revelation of the church. Um, and then I have my notes out of uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and out of Moses' tabernacle and out of Genesis 28 to show you what you've come to this morning. It is really profound. I've been around church all my life. I've been a believer all my life. And the revelations of God are becoming more impacting and bigger than ever, ever, ever before. And one of the revelations that is so necessary today, and I want to repeat it, is to have a revelation of the church, know what we're committed to, who we're committed to. The church is not only a what, the church is the who, because the church is the body of Christ. And the purpose, God has a dynamic purpose for the church. Amen. I thought I heard a sound back there. I thought musicians are coming up, and I know that's curtains for me. Our relationship, listen to this statement, our relationship to the church is determined by the revelation we have of who and what the church is. Our behavior in the church, our commitment, our loyalty to the church, our involvement in the church, 
our honor in the church, how we honor the church, how we honor the members of the church, how we honor the ministry has totally to do with the revelation that we have from God of who and what the church is. Enthusiasm. You can't discipline enthusiasm. I can't say that I'm going to be, I'm going to be so disciplined to produce enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a byproduct of a revelation that I have. And we, we will, not this time, but hopefully the next time, share how transformed Jacob got that even eventually the experience, where he had the experience, he changed the name of that place and the identity of that place, which he had no clue about when he came to that place. Jacob had no clue that he lay down to sleep in the church. Some church members don't have a clue they're sleeping in the church. But thank God there's a wake up. There's a dream. And I don't mean physical sleeping. Spiritual sleeping. I, I just, I, I, I'm going to keep drilling till I really find the oil. Because the church should be the most exciting. The church meeting, the gathering together, the worship, the, the camaraderie, the holy camaraderie should be enthusiastic. Y'all should be here 9 o'clock listening to the practice and worshiping God. I can't wait to be there. Yeah, right. I can, can, can I repeat that? Yeah. It's so good for me to preach in this church because I don't know who comes late and who comes early. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not picking on anybody. We should never, as pastors say, come on time. Oh, my God. To church, do you come late to a dentist app appointment? No, he, he just moves on and you pay for it. But the enthusiasm cannot be produced physically. It's produced with revelation. I've had people say to us at our wonderful age, are you guys crazy? How come you just never stay home? You're in Thailand, you're in Africa, you're in uh, Philippines. I don't know if that's crazy, but I've got a bigger drive for the house of God right now than I ever had in my life. Bigger drive. It's not, well, I'm just going to go and bless the people. Church, I don't know how to put it. I'm going to pray at the end. We need such a supernatural revelation of who the church is that we are so enthusiastic. We are so passion-driven. We're not ho-hum. Where's this one? I don't know. They haven't been in church for three weeks. Pray for them for a revelation. Don't drag them to church because then you'll have to drag them out. Pray for a revelation. Yes, right. It's revelation that does the transformation. Why am I yelling here all by myself? Where are you? Let's work together. Let's have a revelation. Let this be a different church than any other church. Yes. We don't come to church because somebody can pull rabbits out of a hat. We don't come to church, well, I like the music. That's wonderful. You have wonderful music. But one day you're not going to like the music. One day the drums are going to be too loud. One day your ears are going to get weak and you're going to say everything's too loud. I'm going to find a nice quiet church because we need a revelation of the church. Put earplugs in, but stay in the church. Passion, motivation, drive, energy, excitement. It's not natural. It's supernatural. Joy, expectation, priority, giving. I mentioned that last week. 
No one told Jacob to give. I didn't, no record that his father Isaac said, now, now, Jacob, do you know about tithing? I don't know whether he knew or not. I don't know what happened there. But one thing I know that after the revelation of the body of Christ in the church, Bethel, Jacob said, I'm going to tithe. You see, to me, that's real tithing from the heart. Well, I'm, I'm afraid somebody might ask, are you tithing? And I, I either have to lie or we can't lie now. It's all there. People, one guy told me, I said, how come, I, I, how come you don't tithe? And I counsel him so much. And he says, oh, I give cash. I don't need a receipt. I said, that's about five people like you giving cash and there's not enough cash in there for one of you. <laughs> Come on. We don't tithe as minuscule. Yep. We give our whole life. Yep. We become dedicated. That doesn't mean we live here. That means we do everything possible. As, as my wife shared about your participation around the world. And we don't even look for these open doors. Trust me, we phone nobody to get an open door. Those doors are just opening and said, God, how in the world can we fulfill all of that, especially someone that doesn't like flying? I don't like flying. My most spiritual moments are up there in the air. People say, so, so if there's a crash, you'll just go to heaven. That way is okay. I hate going down before I go up. <laughs> but here we are. And if I had a wife that would just wanted to stay home, I'd probably modify what I do. But my wife looks at a jet. I told you, jet stream across the sky. And she goes, dear, I should have been there. <laughs> I go, dear, I'm so thankful I'm here <laughs> on the ground. So we balance one another. Revelation of the church produces all of that. What am I doing for time? I got four minutes. The foundation of the church, listen to this very carefully. What's your foundation of being part of the house of God? Friends, fellowship, uh, music, uh, whatever else. Trust me over the almost whatever years, 58 years or close to 60 of pastoring, I know all of that will change with time. But one thing will not change is, is an encounter with God and to see, as Moses did, the body of heaven in all of its clearness. And Moses and his elders ate with the Lord and drank. I don't know what they drank, coffee or wine. I don't know they where they would have got the wine from, but they ate and they drank with God. I'm going to stretch this a little bit. Who are you sitting with? Who are you eating with? and associating with. It's that body of Christ that was knocking on the door saying, can I come in and fellowship with you and commune with you? I want to commune with you. I always thought I'm chasing God down. How many thought that? You know, God's kind of always aloof and I'm chasing after him to have a relationship it's totally the opposite. He's chased us down, and thank God he caught us. How many are happy you got caught? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to stop there, but I want us to stand to our feet, and I want to pray, and <clears throat> I'll unpack it from uh, those scriptures I gave you because they are extremely dynamic. And in those scriptures, and I want you to hear this very carefully, 
because what I'm going to unpack is already happening right here. I'm not unpacking it for it to happen. I'm going to unpack to show you what is happening. And right now, right now, there's an activity of God in his body. There's a pulse of God, the heartbeat of God. There's an angelic activity right now. And I, I prayed about this and God said, tell the people, I'm healing them right now. How many believe that God wants to do mass healings? He did a mass healing when Israel was in bondage and they came out and not one of them was feeble. How? Passover lamb got into the house. How many know Passover lamb is in the house? When you have communion in this place, it's not just, oh, I'm just trying to re remind myself that Jesus died for me. No, you're bringing the very power of what Jesus did into the present moment. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Meet every person with your Holy Spirit with a revelation. And then we'll, our participation will be based on our revelation. Our commitment, our loyalty will not be based because it's a nice place to be. Of course it's a nice place to be, but that's not good enough. Listen, church, that's not good enough when the storm comes. We have to have a rock revelation from Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Could you raise your hand and say, Lord, I'm here, please. This is my antenna. Revolutionize my life further with a divine insight on who the church is. I want to be excited about the church. I don't want to be disciplined to go to church. Church, listen to me. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like discipline. I have never disciplined myself reading the Word of God. I'm disciplining myself to do, help my wife sweep the floor because I'd be in that Word, be in that Word, be in that Word. So, okay, I'm done. Give God praise. God will give you a revelation. That's why He's talking to us like He is. All right, God bless. Amen. How great is our God. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Pastor Andrew, for that word. And uh, we want to thank you um, just for being here today. Um, it's my um, honor to stand before the council and the church body here at Case. Um, sometimes um, we have to make decisions in our life that aren't easy and that are a little bit, um, you know, uneasy because we don't know what the future holds. And, but if I know one thing in my own life, speaking from experience, that sometimes um, God has different things in store for us. And it's kind of a bittersweet thing because sometimes we get comfortable in what we've done or what we're doing. And going forward, we might not know what he has planned. But if I can just say something, it's always good. It's always good. Amen. Um, I just want to invite Vicki and Dave to come up. Stand with me. For those of you who don't know, this is Vicki and this is Dave. If you don't know, they're married. That's why they're kind of getting close. They actually, they actually met in this church. They got married right here. And um, yeah, we, we, we just want to honor you today. For those of you um, who know, Vicki is our World Changers Director. And um, she's put in a lot of dedication and a lot of, a lot of work. And you have a passion for children and you have a, a great passion for God to use you in any way that he can, especially when it comes to children. And we're sad to say that Vicki put in her resignation this week. And um, it's always a hard thing for everybody. And, um, but we wanna say thank you. On behalf of the church, on behalf of the staff, and on, and on behalf of the council, we just wanna thank you for all that you poured out. These are actually for you, so if you want to take them, they probably look better. Have you? They're beautiful flowers. They're not Dave's, Kelly. <laughs> Anyways, we just want to thank you so much for your faithfulness to God, and um, we want to bless you, and uh, we, we just want God's very best for you. And uh, we don't know what's going on from the next few weeks, May 11th, you said was your last day in the office. And um, yeah, we, we just want to encourage them and pray for them. Please lift them up in your prayers. And um, you don't know what God has in the future. We don't know what God has in the future, but we know it's good. And uh, it may be hard, but know it's good. His plan is always perfect. But thank you so much, Vicki. And thank you so much, Dave, too. Yeah, would you stretch your hand towards them, please? And we're going to say a blessing upon them. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for this wonderful couple. God, I thank you for their faithfulness to you. Lord, I thank you that they're your children and they love you. And their ultimate desire and passion is to serve you faithfully in whatever that looks like, God. And Lord, I pray that you bless them. We pray as a body that you would just take them on whatever journey that, that you're wanting to take them in, God. And Lord, bless them and may it be fruitful, God. And I pray that as they step on this next phase of whatever that is, that they will know God, that they have a church body who, who does love them and, and is supporting them in, in every decision that they make as a couple, Lord God. We pray you bless them and um, 
yeah, just have your favor upon them, Lord God. We just thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Anyways, we just wanted um, you all to know as well that um, in the transition of Vicky stepping down, that um, Derek, who is our leader of our youth, um, has come forward and has decided that he would take on the responsibility. And um, and and so we just want to um, just let you know that. It's always scary at first when you when you know that someone's leaving, and you wonder who's gonna who's gonna take care of that. Um, God is taking care of everything. Amen. Anyways, um, we want to bless you like we do every week, and so if you want to hold out your hands, and we'll say this together: May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his fine face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a good week, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye.